Now let's move on to column win loads. Column win loads are the default loads uh, that are used when you import or directly apply them from the win load generator. Uh, they're very similar to one-way loads because they use one-way distributive action uh, to distribute to the, to the members that you apply them to. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll actually pretend that this face of our quote-unquote building is uh, seeing some lateral wind load and um, we'll apply the, the loads as a uh, column wind load. So what we'll do is we'll hide the rest of the structure here. So to apply a one uh, or excuse me, to apply a column wind load, come over to the the type field, select column wind load, identify the corner node IDs, which for this face of our building is these co uh, these four nodes. So we'll type those in. Okay, and the elevations and pressure magnitudes uh, fields are where. Uh, the column wind loads differ from normal one-way loading. So column wind loads are actually the only uh, type of area load that we have in our platform now that uh, allows you to step and vary the loads or the pressures along the length uh, of the member. So what this elevations uh, field does is this is how you identify where those steps and pressure uh, are going to be. Um, the elevations basically go from zero to the height of your structure or the height of the member. Um, because column wind loads can actually be used really in any direction, they can be used on slanted uh, faces, they can use on slope faces. Um, this elevations is kind of arbitrary. It's really, it's really the distance along the member from uh, start to finish where you want the loads to step. Um, starting at zero, again, the what 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 side is identified as zero is dependent on the column beam direction, which this is this was shown in the one-way uh, area load that we applied earlier. Um, but right now we have the column beam direction as 15 to 18. So it's from this node to this node. So we're identifying this direction as the direction of our column. So when we apply this load, it'll be on this member, this member, and this member. So 5, 9, and 14. What's uh, what's something you have to pay attention uh, more so when you're applying column wind loads is that uh, the column beam direction basically will say node 15 is the start elevation and node 18 is the end elevation. So when you say elevation 0, elevation 0 is dependent on the order of this, of this field. So if this was reversed, 18, 15, elevation 0 would correspond to this elevation up here. So you always want to make sure that you go from top to bottom when you're identifying the column uh, slash beam direction for the for the column wind loads. So let's just do an example here. It's a lot easier to show. So we'll say that uh, from 0 to 2 feet, there's a pressure, and then it changes. And then at 5 feet, it changes. And then let's say at 8 feet, it changes. And then finally 10. So you can see we have five different elevation values here. When you go into pressure magnitudes, there should be one less value that there are than there are elevations. So there should be four pressure magnitudes um, for the five elevation values. Um, the reason the reason being is because um, basically what we're saying is from zero to two, that will correspond to the first pressure. From two to five, that will correspond to the second pressure, and so on and so forth. So what we'll do is we'll just do, let's say, 50 psf for the first. Uh, range of values between 0 and 2 and then we'll say maybe 70 PSF for the second range of values so 2 to 5 and then we'll, we'll keep filling out this field here so what I've put in there now is I've put in four different values for pressures that correspond to uh, the elevations that we put in here uh, we'll just call this wind load Actually, we'll call this wind load in the X, be a little more specific. Hit apply. So there you can see the, the steps in our load. So it's, it's using one-way action to calculate the, the, the tributary width of each column. Basically, like there's a facade here, and that the entire facade is taking the lateral load and distributing it to these columns that we identified uh, that are a part of the uh, corner node IDs that we identified earlier.
so like you can see, you can see there's the, the step. So if I wanted to change this um, to let's say it steps at four instead of two, you can see that the, the step now is at four and then there's from four to five the pressure changes, et cetera, et cetera. So very, very useful for uh, modeling pressures that vary along, along a length of a column or a member. Uh, again, this, if you imagine this being sloped, um, it's the same thing. The, ele the, the term elevations applies there, whereas um, instead of up and down, it's just along the length of members. So you need to know what the length of that slanted member is. And again, it, as long as you identify the start and end of it with the column beam direction, you can apply this type of load to really any direction on any type of face. Um, and it's going to use a one-way action to, um, to calculate those values. Another thing you can do with column wind loads is you don't have to apply the load to the entire length. You can offset these if you if you wish. So um, maybe instead of, you know, we, we don't assume there's any pressure at zero. Maybe we assume that um, half the pressure goes to the ground. So we don't we don't worry about that. So we'll we'll say that the it starts at five because the top of our structure here is at ten. Um, so we'll we'll say that it starts at five and then maybe it steps at we'll we'll keep the same pressure magnitudes, but Maybe it steps four times, so I think we'll do this. Five, six, seven, eight, and 10. So those are the five different elevation values that we've now have for our um, the same pressure magnitudes. So now you can see that instead of having a, a, the variable load along the entire length of the column, we've now basically offset that to start at elevation five, and then step four different times um, towards the end of the member. So a key things to note for when, when you're using column wind loads is that the column beam direction, similar to the one way you need to apply uh, or select the, the, the member uh, direction of the column or whatever member uh, you're applying it to. But more importantly, the first number identifies the start elevation and the second node identifies the end elevation and that the field of elevations uh, is really more dependent on the length of the member. So this is a 10 foot high structure. This could be a 15 foot uh, long slanted member and that would be kind of your uh, elevations. And then lastly, you always want to have one less pressure magnitude than you have number of elevations. So with that, that's a quick look at the column wind loads.